Hi, I'm Jet Kuso, and today I'm talking about gate cards. But not these fat old G.I. Joe packed looking things, but the brand new gate cards that come with most Fusion Bakugan singles. Not only am I going to be talking about what they are and how they work, but we're going to be testing them out ourselves to see if they're any good. Field open! That's the cheesiest thing I've ever done on this channel. I think it was good. It was good? I think it's gonna tug on those nostalgia strings. Oh yeah. <laughs> Easily the most startling difference between Legacy Bakugan and the Bakugan reboot was gate cards getting replaced by Baku cores. Both function the same basic way. You roll your Bakugan onto it, and the metal plate sandwiched inside grabs the Bakugan's magnet, causing it to pop open. Old gate cards and ability cards were weirdly oversized. Likely the idea was to make the card easier to hit, but it caused other problems instead, such as having to buy a specially made Bakugan card binder to store your cards. The new gate cards, by comparison, are standard card sized. They'll fit in any deck box, any binder, and if you want, you can cram them into normal card sleeves, but why? Why? A few other things have changed as well. The backing art is different, and the front art is more or less full art. You might also notice that these gate cards have no names and no text boxes, and the attribute bonuses on the side include negative debuffs, unlike the gate cards that most of us know. In many ways, this is an uncanny return to form of the very first version of Legacy Gate Cards. They can be hard to come by these days, but some of the original HSP gate cards didn't have names. It's actually kind of wild how similar they are. The new cards are, at the very least, numbered, so you can tell them apart that way. But regardless of the details, gate cards are back and better looking than ever. We really should have suspected that the gate trainer cards from the very first waves of Armored Alliance were training us for something. But this all begs the question. Why is the teleprompter not moving on? But this all begs the question, why are gate cards back now of all times? And what does this mean for the Bakugan reboot? Everyone was confused by Baku cores at the start of the reboot. Baku cores are obviously quite a bit smaller than gate cards, and you know, different shaped. The point of the design is so Ultra Bakugan can grab them and reveal their bonuses as they flip over, but it's resulted in much deeper gameplay for the pro TCG. Core placement, core choice, core strategy, core stealing, strategic blocking, all incredible additions to Bakugan. But if cores are so good, what did we lose by getting rid of gate cards? Well, the problem is mostly... The toy battling game. The toy battling game, which uses only toys and character cards and not a 40 card deck, is an aspect of the Bakugan reboot that has been severely lacking from the beginning. The Legacy game, with gate cards and ability cards, already lacked depth, and as a result it lost fans as they got older, or never grabbed kids with gameplay in the first place. That being said, it did have a beautiful charm in its simplicity. Six cards and three Bakugan made a deck. Easy to carry in your pockets, and easy to set up in a quick battle with any challengers on the playground. It was fast, fun, and easy to understand. And, you know, physically possible for the instruction sheets to explain and stuff. Not like that's important or anything. It's very important! This all leads us to gameplay. On one hand, I believe the TCG is plenty understandable for most kids. It's not really that complicated, and kids are unexpectedly smart most of the time, so it's good to respect their intelligence and get the real game in front of them so they can learn. The only problem is that the pro TCG can run kind of long. It's kind of tough to set up, and it takes too many game pieces to easily carry with you unless you have a bag or a backpack. It's very much a local game store game, especially because it's so precision that you really need a nice rolling surface. Because of all this, I was hopeful that gate cards would bring with them a new format that's easier to play quickly, but still engaging enough to be worth playing. A deck I can stuff in a Baku clip, carry with me, and use to challenge strangers I happen to make eye contact with in a target parking lot. So how does the gate battling game work? Well... Okay, so you get three cards each, you place them... Oh gosh, you put them all out at the same time. Oh, that's... I guess that makes rolling easy for kids, but... 
Okay, you both roll them at the same time. Sure, sure. And you just use the bonuses from whatever gate card you get. All right, well, okay, so it's the toy battling game. It's just a big toy battling game with gate cards acting like big Baku cores. Plus, they added the terrible element that Fusion Bakugan, regardless of the cost, fuse automatically as soon as they get on a gate card with the Fusion symbol on it, making the whole game just a matter of using a Fusion that I almost fell over, making the whole game just a matter of using a Fusion that's 2000 B power or whatever. Uh, you may have a lot of questions, because this brochure leaves open a lot of questions. How do Baku Gear work with gate cards? Can you use multiples of the same gate card? Do you put gate cards back where they were if you don't win with them? How many Baku Gear can I use? Do fusions get attribute bonuses? Do you need character cards? How does fusion work with gate cards? How do I choose cards? what Baku Gear? Can I use Baku Gear? Do you put gate cards back where they were? I don't know, okay? I don't know. No one knows. Spin Master hasn't said anything about them, except this... Except this terrible little brochure. It's frustrating. Maddening, even. But... Whatever, I like gate cards, so I'm gonna try it out. <laughs> let's, let's, let's try it out. So, uh, gate card set, you, then now you do one. No, oh, I don't have a strategy even though. <laughs> there's nothing, there's no strategies to be had. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, Bakugan Brawl. Are they actually on the same card, or? I don't know, uh, and now we battle. <laughs> really? Yep. On separate gate cards? Correct. Um, so I am uh, 800 B power, and I got a 500 bonus, so I'm at 1300. Uh, and since there's a little fusion symbol, I fuse right away. Okay. Uh, so I'm now at 2500. What are you at? So I'm at um, 2500. Oh, wow. Unless I get an extra. See, I mean, do I get the Ventus bonus? I don't know. I Because th now we're dual attribute. So I don't know if we get to choose which one or if we get both. Oh, wait, no, I would win. You would win. So I think I think you win that. Three, two, two one. Bakugan Brawl. Oh. Which one did you open on? I think this one. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm at 2,500, or 2,600 again. Yeah, I'm at uh, 900. So... Okay, so... I guess I, I win the gate card and it goes in my energy zone. Three, Three two, two, one, bottom one brawl. Ugh. <laughs> Looks like 1400. Okay, so I am at, um, so I get the, uh, uh, my fuse for free. So I'm at 1900. Okay, I guess you win. I win that. Fuse man. And I guess I take the gate card. Oh, I can just throw it across. The I can do whatever I want. The, wor the world is your oyster noise. <laughs> Three, Three, two, two one, brawl. Okay. Um, I'm at 1400 again. Uh, I am already 1100 and I fuse. Nani? So, 18, so I'm at 2000. Alright. So I win the game. Wow, fusions are really good, guys. Good game! That was a the worst. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was nothing. After several boring, confused playtests of the gate battling game last night, we confirmed our suspicions that it's... it's not good. <laughs> I really hate to say that, but at the very least, it wasn't fun for us. It's just mimicking the form factor of something good, gate cards, without having any clue why they were good. Like the Evangelion rebuilds, or Cookie Crunch, or most covers of Last Christmas by Wham! The whole point just seems to be giving kids something easy to roll onto, which even kids don't find very fun because it's too easy. Unless they're like, five, maybe. What if they were instructed to make it bad to encourage kids to move up to the TCG? That would be like 2000 IQ pro strats. <laughs> <laughs> children grow. It's what children do. They have to have something that they can easily get into, but potentially get better at. Something that will grow with their skill level, and grow their skill level as they play. A game that isn't for kids, but doesn't exclude them either. With that in mind, last night Connor and I started playtesting various different made-up versions of a gate card format. We pulled inspiration from the whole history of Bakugan. Bakutech, the classic game, HSP, Battle Planet, the video games, and both TV shows to create an action-packed, skill-based version of the game unlike any other. Introducing Bakugan Melee. Buckle up, here's how to play.
A deck is made of three different Bakugan, three different gate cards, and three different colors of Baku Core. Core and Ultra Bakugan can both be used. Character cards are not used in this version of the game, only the printed B power on the toy. That goes for fusions as well. The objective of Melee is to be the first brawler to win three gate cards. You can win gate cards with battles, double stands, or critical knockouts. Players take turns rolling. I'll explain. At the start of the game, both players set a gate card opposite themselves, just like this. Then you flip a coin to decide who gets the first turn. You can choose to place a gate card at the beginning of your turn, but you don't have to. When you roll out a Bakugan and it activates on a card, as long as it is touching a gate card, it stays where it is until something else happens. That's called a stand. Whether it's an Ultra or a Core, if it's touching a gate card, it is stood on that gate card, and you are not allowed to touch the Bakugan. With your opponent's consent, you can adjust gate cards to be where they should be. But don't touch your Bakugan! If your Bakugan is an Ultra and it's kind of between two cards, you and the other player can use your own judgment to decide which card it's on. Typically, if its feet are on one card, that's the one it's standing on. But if you can't agree, the Magnet is the tiebreaker. Whichever card the Magnet is connected to or hovering over more, that's the card the Bakugan is on. This very mechanic is what makes this version of the game absolutely insanely fun. A missed Bakugan gets retracted, but a stood Bakugan stays where it is and the next player gets to roll. If they miss or stand on a different gate card, the turn passes back to the previous player. If two of your Bakugan end up on the same gate card, you win that gate card. That is called a double stand and it counts any time a gate card is occupied by two of one player's Bakugan. Battles work basically like normal, the person with the highest number wins. You get a gate card bonus or a negative based on your attribute. If your Bakugan is a fusion, you only get the bonus for your base attribute, unless the gate card has the fusion icon. If it's a fusion gate card, all fusions in the battle get both attribute bonuses for their two attributes. With that said, a darkest darkest fusion would not get the darkest bonus twice. Sorry, Nillinok. <laughs> Baku cores act as power-ups in battle. If your B power is lower than your opponent, you can choose to toss any of your Baku cores onto your Bakugan for a bonus. You can use up all three of your cores in one battle if you want, but then you won't have any available later in the game. Fusion Baku cores also only work on a fusion gate card, so that's a risky choice. Now if you're using an ultra, it's encouraged to try to actually toss your Baku core onto the magnet on its back. Get it? It's like the show! Anyway, the person with the higher B power wins the gate card. Only two more and you've won the game! Wow! So, battles are simple enough, but that's not the place where Bakugan Melee shines. Melee is about skills. Now is where you have to start paying attention. If you roll out a gate card occupied by an opponent Bakugan and knock them off the card, this is called a knockout. Their Bakugan gets retracted unless it ends up on a different gate card. If it's open and it's on a gate card, it's good. The floor is lava in Bakugan Melee. Now, if you get a knockout on an opponent Bakugan, and your Bakugan stands with its magnet engaged, it counts as a critical knockout, and you instantly win that gate card. Critical knockouts are a big part of Melee, and a great way to win gate cards, but they take a lot of skill to perform. Okay, you've got the basics, so here's where it gets wild, but still, really intuitive. If you roll at a gate card occupied by an opponent Bakugan, and both monsters get knocked off the card, both are retracted. If you roll at a card occupied by your own Bakugan, but knock yours off, whoops, that's a failed double stand. Unless a Bakugan knocks another Bakugan off its card onto another card that's occupied by another of that player's Bakugan. Then that player wins that card as a double stand. You can even knock out a Bakugan and engage in a battle on a different gate card by accident or on purpose. Yes, you can critical knock out your opponent, but accidentally knock them out into a double stand. Then both players would win their cards respectively. Now say you try to double stand, but you end up knocking both of your Bakugan onto a card occupied by an opponent Bakugan. Well, now you've got a triple battle, and all three Bakugan engage in the battle together. I think you're getting the point by now. Brawl format is all about what card your Bakugan is on. It's a few simple rules that can lead to an absolutely endless range of possibilities. The possibilities are made even more endless by the sheer amount of different Bakugan. Some Bakugan are harder to knock out. Some Bakugan are going to be better at performing knockouts. Some Bakugan are skinnier, making them easier for you to squeeze into small spaces or double stand with. Ultras are completely unpredictable. Yeah, Ultras might perform in a million different ways with how many varieties there are. 
As it is now, the elements that aren't totally thought out are Baku cores and used piles. We aren't using used piles at all right now, except for gate cards you've won and the Baku cores you've used. Maybe a used pile system would be better balanced, but we're not using it right now to avoid overcomplicating things. Baku cores are also slightly messy as is. There's no rule for what damage, frost strike, or Baku gear icons mean at the moment. If you guys have any suggestions, we are more than open to hearing it out. This is a game in development. Also, there are a bunch of gameplay scenarios that we weren't able to fit in this video, so if you have any questions or if anything comes up in your own testing, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll try to answer them. Bakugan Melee can be enjoyed by anyone, due to its simplicity in concept, but easy to grasp complexity in practice. Give it a try. So that's gate cards. The official format for them may be garbage baby games, but I'm glad they're back because the possibilities for doing your own game design is absolutely endless. But really, just play Melee. It's really fun. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell icon so you get a notification every time I post a new video. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at JetCuso, and thank you to VeronoOC, Prime, and SheVitus for supporting the channel on Patreon. You too can help support my content at patreon.com slash JetCuso. Thank you again for watching. This is JetCuso, and I'll see you next time. Huh!